Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our customer service webinar this morning on handling difficult people. I'm Rosie King from Corporate Training Options, and today we're going to be looking at um, handling difficult people with our um, presenter, Candace Stein. Candace is a learning facilitator, a consultant and coach with over 15 years experience. And she strongly believes that workplace conflict can be greatly enhanced through active listening and improved communication skills. Learning to use the right words, voice and attitude can calm people and help resolve difficult situations. And today we're gonna to learn how to remain calm, diffuse conflict and keep your dignity when handling difficult people. So I will hand over to Candice. Enjoy the webinar. Okay. Thanks, Candice. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And thank you for joining us today to discuss handling difficult people. Thank you, Rosie, for inviting me to present on one of my favorite topics. I'm just going to share my screen. Great. So I would like to start off today with a quick poll. I'd like to get an idea of how comfortable you feel in handling difficult people. So in the chat box, can you please um, put in which number you feel most comfortable with? So are you comfortable uh, handling difficult people? Somewhat comfortable, perhaps not really comfortable, or not comfortable at all? Okay, we're seeing lots of twos, some threes, a four. Great, thank you. Okay, so on any given day, we have multiple interactions with different people, be it in our personal or professional lives. Sometimes we are faced with an interaction which becomes challenging. It may be a colleague, customer, partner, friend or family member. Depending on our current mood, past experiences and existing relationships with this person, we may fall into the trap of having a really difficult and strained conversation. We've all encountered difficult people in our lives. It is an inevitable part of life and something that is badly unavoidable. Therefore, it's really important that we have some techniques to use when faced with difficult people. A difficult person is defined as having traits or characteristics that make it difficult, if not impossible, to communicate with them. They're often unaware of the negativity that they spread or sometimes even the chaos that they create. I love this um, meme here saying, I don't like to be difficult, but it's the only thing I'm really good at. In today's webinar, we are going to discuss the following. The different types of difficult people and how to deal with them. Techniques we can use to remain calm when dealing with difficult people and an easy to use model called the lead model to lead difficult people to better outcomes. First, we're gonna look at different types of difficult people that you may face. The passive type. These are the ones who sit quietly, don't participate in any office activities. They prefer to follow than to lead. They really express feelings and have very little self-confidence and they like to avoid problems. They don't re really speak up or share information, offer ideas, conflict is a no-no, and they really allow others to take advantage of, advantage of them because they're quite silent in the way that they communicate. The passive-aggressive types, they seem supportive and compliant, but once you walk away from the conversation, they are, often turn on you. You never really know what they're thinking or feeling, um, they may deny that they are angry, use a bit of sarcasm. What's really interesting with passive aggressive is you can often see a disconnect between what they say and what they do. There's a lot of talk and not often results. And sometimes they lack eye contact and become fidgety because they may be hiding something that they're not sharing with you. They may outwardly accept the problem, but keep the anger inside. The aggressive personality is one that is most feared. Um, these 
people may be expressive to the point that they humiliate and devalue others. They're loud, flinging their arms, finger pointing, raising their voices. They act in anger. They're often demanding, outspoken and commandeering. And often the aggressive person attacks the person rather than attacking the problem. So how do we deal with these difficult people? Well, someone who's passive and we want to get them to voice how they're feeling, it's a good idea to ask them some clear questions. Be patient because it might be difficult for them to share how they're feeling. Let them know how much you desire to understand the issue. And it may come to a point where you have to give them a little push or even force them to make a decision when the timing is right, as they may not have the confidence to actually express how they're feeling. The passive aggressive, again, asking clear and direct questions to get to the bottom of the issue. Confront them when you suspect they're hiding anger or resentment. And point out that disconnect between their words and behavior. That way, you, uh, they know that you feel that there's something that they're hiding. The aggressive, try not to take their behavior personally. Stay calm, as difficult as that might be, and wait until they're less angry and then be able to talk to them calmly. So staying calm, dealing with difficult people can really be exhausting, stressful, and really take a toll on your mental well-being. It's really important to remember some techniques that you can use in that heated moment with a difficult person. The first thing is breathe. Appreciate that silence. Remember that you can't control what the other person, how the other person is reacting, but you can control how you respond to this interaction. So when you feel like your lid is about to blow, take a long, deep breath. It releases tension. It calms down our fight or flight reactions, and it allows us to choose more considerate and constructive responses. Pause and count to 10. Similar to breathing, similar to that silence. Make, make sure you feel comfortable with pausing. It gives you the space to collect your thoughts and how you're going to respond to the situation. Take a deep breath, and often the person will take that deep breath with you. A mo one moment of silence can save you from a hundred moments of regret. It can also disarm the customer because they may be expecting you to retaliate with anger and yelling, but instead you're just giving them silence. Another tip to, to staying calm is don't take it personally. If you take everything personally in life, you will be offended for the rest of your life. The way people treat you is their problem. How you react is yours. Respect people's differences and try and disconnect from that um, emotional connection that you're making to this interaction. And lastly, one of my favorites is visualizing your happy place. Have a visual reminder at your desk or somewhere nearby um, of your favorite travel destination, your kids or your pet. It just allows you again to disconnect from this feeling of um, heightened emotions and anger. Okay, so what can we do to ease the tension and move towards resolving an issue? We have a model known as LEAD, and LEAD stands for listen, explore, attend and deliver. It's an easy way to remember how to approach a difficult exchange. It's a strategy to help you maintain your composure and work through a difficult situation with appropriate openness so you can identify what the real problem is. The first step to the lead model is listen. Frequently we try and fix the problem with solutions that don't work because we haven't taken the opportunity to hear and understand what happened. Listening to understand is the first step to dealing with difficult people. It shows respect and regard 
and everybody has the right to be heard. So make eye contact with the person, use verbal positive cues such as yes, aha, uh -huh, so they know that you're truly listening. Also nonverbal cues, nodding your head, smiling, and leaning forward into the conversation. The next step is explore. With good questioning techniques, so we create an opportunity to fully understand what has happened and how the difficult person experienced it. The reasons for their feelings become clearer and less intense as you start to explore what's going on and give them the chance to express how they're feeling. It's important through the exploration to remain calm and maintain your composure. Stay engaged so the person feels that you um, still there and listening to them. Maintain a professional approach. Use open-ended questions to get more information. Attend. Stay focused on the other party and his or her problem until it is fully expressed and she feels or he, she, he or she feels understood. Um, watch your body language and make sure that you're still making eye contact. Pay attention, ask further clarifying questions, track how things are going, and encourage, encourage good timing and pacing. There's nothing wrong with taking a step back during this stage as well. If you get to a point where you feel like you're not getting the outcome that you need, you can always say to the other person, let's take some time to clear our heads and think about this, and let's get together in another hour and look and see how we feel about a resolution. And the last step in the process is deliver. After you've listened, asked questions to fully understand and attend to them, you're now positioned to respond with your thoughts about how to address the situation. It will be on point because you've taken the time and the effort to fully understand what the issue is. And it has far more potential to build a better and lasting relationship. This is the time where you want to summarize, summarize your understanding of what's going on gain commitment or a next step from the other person. So our bonus topic for today is what is the worst thing you can do when handling difficult people? As Benjamin Franklin put it, remember not only to say the right thing in the right place, but far more difficult still to leave unsaid the wrong thing at the tempting moment. Think twice before you say something that you will regret later. Remember your own values and beliefs and the respect you have for yourself. Don't destroy your brand, your career, or your reputation in a moment of frustration. If you do have any questions, I suggest either you pop them in the chat box or stay behind when this webinar is finished so that we can address those for you. Thank you very much for listening today, and I hope you got something out of it. Back to you, Rosie. I'm going to stop my screen. Come on, Blake. Thank you, Candice. That was um, really insightful. And um, I guess for, um, we had some comments in the office here, so how do you remember that in the situation? I guess maybe something you would recommend would be to role, role play in the office for the lead model. Yeah, so um, you could certainly have something on your desk reminding you of lead. Um, it is pretty simple. Yeah. Listen, explore, attend and deliver. And um, just keeping that in mind when, you, when you're going into an interaction, um, slow yeah. it down. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really enjoyed the presentation and certainly learned a lot from it. Um, we have had a question um, from Lynn. Do we have printed notes about the presentation, Lynn? We will, and to everyone. Um, today's presentation will be on the Corporate Training Options YouTube channel um, within the hour, so you can certainly go there. And if you would like a copy of the presentation, um, please feel free to just pop us through your email address and we can, we can um, email you the slides. But that was great. Um, one last thing before we go. Um, thank you, Candice. And um, Blake's going to put up in the chat um, for us now um, the link to the Handling Difficult People uh, training course that, that CTO presents. 
So if anyone wanted to look further at um, the topics covered, certainly the lead model is part of that. And um, yeah, <laughs> Candice is one of our fabulous facilitators who does present that course. So she is available um, for the training. And um, it's certainly, unfortunately, uh, maybe the wrong way to say it, it's one of our most popular courses um, with our professional development. <laughs> um, so I guess there's more difficult people out there in the world than, than any of us perhaps would, perhaps would like to acknowledge. Um, but thank you again, Candice. Just a quick note about um, our next webinar in a fortnight's time. Um, we, we swap between our leadership and customer service webinars and our technology webinars because we do training in, in a range of areas in our business environments. Um, and in two weeks time, we're running a webinar called the Modern Workplace, which talks about how you can use technology in your workplace to uh, be able to collaborate and communicate and um, work better within your teams. Um, and I'm excited to announce to everyone that our presenter for next week will be John Barrett from Microsoft, who's the modern workplace specialist at Microsoft. So that'll be really exciting. So we'll send you out some details about that soon. But again, thank you everyone for joining us. And um, thank you again for Candice. That was terrific. And we will see you all next time. Bye for now.